powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. President Trump telling Americans to prepare for a very painful two weeks as COVID-19 cases and deaths climb. According to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, there are now 189,510 positive cases of COVID-19 in the United States. Nearly 4,100 people have now died, around 1,100 in New York City alone. While the majority of people do survive, only 7,068 are considered recovered at this point. Well, the president says the country will face a tough couple of weeks as his task force released the data models used to inform his social distancing guidelines today. Meanwhile, the Pentagon is working to help an aircraft carrier as the coronavirus moves through its ranks. Skyler Henry reports from the White House. The nation's top health experts warn Americans should prepare for 100,000 or more deaths, though the coronavirus is expected to peak within the next two weeks. We've got to brace ourselves. In the next several days to a week or so, we're going to continue to see things go up. But the president and his advisors say social distancing guidelines can help mitigate that spread. We're going to see things get better all of a sudden, and it's going to be like a burst of light. There's no magic bullet. There's no magic vaccine or therapy. It's just behaviors. Several major U.S. companies have stepped up in recent weeks, producing ventilators, face masks, and other personal protection equipment. But governors from states large and small say they still are unable to secure the medical supplies they need. It's like being on eBay with 50 other states, and now FEMA is bidding on top of the 50. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called on the president to use the Defense Production Act to do more. Tuesday, both the president and the House Speaker pushed the need for infrastructure spending in the fourth stimulus bill. But a senior official says the White House is focused on implementing the massive Phase 3 economic rescue package for now. A small business loans program is expected to be up and running by the end of the week, and Americans could begin to see direct payments in the next couple of weeks. Meanwhile, the Pentagon is sending medical supplies and personnel to assist the USS Theodore Roosevelt after the captain sent a letter pleading for help, with dozens of sailors testing positive for COVID-19. We are offloading from the ship uh, the sailors who are infected. Uh, we're giving them appropriate treatment ashore. Esper says safety is his top priority for U.S. service members and their families. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Also today, President Trump declared that a major disaster exists in the state of Montana and ordered federal assistance to supplement state, tribal, and local recovery efforts in the areas affected by the coronavirus. Both Montana senators have been asking for the president to get that done. Well, the number of confirmed cases in the state reaching 198 late this afternoon. So far, five people have died from COVID-19 across Montana. The state hasn't released any further information on the latest victim. More than 4,500 people have been tested so far across the state. Those increases include two in Yellowstone County and the first case so far in Muscle, Muscle Shell County uh, reported today. Gallatin County with the most confirmed cases adds another five, bringing the total there to 74 now. Well, Governor Bullock issued another directive today banning evictions, foreclosures and late fees during Montana's stay at home order. The governor is saying that Montanans should not be without a roof over their heads right now. As the stay at home order continues and businesses close, it's going to be tough for some to come up with money for rent and utilities. So today, Bullock focused on easing some of those hardships by prohibiting landlords from evicting people or charging late fees during this time. Now, let me be clear, this directive, it's not a free pass on rent or on home debt. Tenants and homeowners still need to meet their obligations and should do so on time where they can. But so long as this virus forces Montanans to stay home to save lives, Montanans need a home to stay in. That also means providing for essential utilities that allow Montanans to remain safely in their homes. The governor was also asked about comments he made in a call yesterday with President Trump stating that Montana is one day away from running out of test kits. If we lost one day, or if all of a sudden we had a huge spike in testing, all of a sudden we'd start creating a significant backlog along the way. Um, raised concerns last week about it. We got at least for now an extra number of test kits. Um, had a call with 
the director of FEMA uh, last Friday, expressing some of the concerns as well. Um, this is something we're working on each and every day. Another thing the governor did indicate that the stay at home order could possibly be extended so the economic uncertainty we're all dealing with could be lasting a well longer even. Vacation rentals seem to be up in Montana as people may be fleeing major cities adversely if, uh, impacted by the coronavirus. But how will Governor Bullock's 14 day self quarantine order impact their stay? Well, according to vacation rental site, AirDNA.com rental demand is up in the Billings area with 205 active rentals right now. The occupancy rate is at 80 percent. That's up 8 percent from last month. However, Bullock just yesterday directed that travelers arriving from other states to Montana for non-work related reasons must undergo a 14 day quarantine. Bullock's directive also says the Montana Department of Commerce should advise vacation and rental sites about that quarantine. And according to the site, Behind Bozeman, Billings ranks as the second highest for annual guests visiting Montana. We are now into the third week of school closure here in Billings. Today we heard about the basic need of food for some students. School District 2 is reporting the need for backpack meals has quadrupled since schools closed. Our backpack, a number of students qualifying for backpack lunches and meals has quadrupled. And the cost um, for those, we, we anticipate the cost for the backpack meals over the um, spring holiday weekend is going to approach $10,000. And so, you know, why is it happening? Well, uh, a lot of the parents that are out of work and that are being furloughed, especially in the service industry, you know, um, are not, don't have the ability to, to purchase the food. And so it's a real issue. We need to begin planning uh, in the case that we will not have graduation. And, you know, as it's looking right now, it, it, I doubt very much if the powers that be will allow us to bring upwards of 25,000 people back together on one day. Uh, I just don't see it happening. So we have uh, conversations and had conversations and will continue discussions on, okay, what does graduation look like? There's been no decision yet on whether or not school will resume this year in class. In case you were wondering if the Keystone XL pipeline might fall victim to the coronavirus, the answer is an emphatic no. As oil prices plummet and social distancing becomes the norm, Canadian firm TC Energy announces it's moving full steam ahead with the multi-billion dollar project. Keto's Jay Cohn joins us tonight with more on today's big announcement. Well, good evening, Russ. Just when some of us thought this pandemic and the collapse of the price of oil might be the death knell for the Keystone XL pipeline project, up steps the government of Alberta, Canada with a $1.1 billion investment, a lifeline, if you will, that may kickstart this project once and for all. And on top of that, I've learned that the company TC Energy plans to put shovels in the ground tomorrow morning to begin to dig the trench over the U.S.-Canadian border. This will be with a limited crew, I've been told, just that 1.2-mile stretch north of Malta, about 50 miles on land controlled by the Bureau of Land Management. Now, this will be done under the nationwide permit granted by President Trump last March. It's a permit, by the way, that's currently being challenged in court. TC Energy's announcement Tuesday that it plans to get to work. It's a sudden reversal from last month when the company acknowledged because of too much uncertainty, it would simply not be able to fully commit to the project. The $1.1 billion investment from the Alberta government apparently will fund the project through the end of the year. And TC Energy says over the years it will give the North American economy an $8 billion shot in the arm. TC Energy President and CEO Russ Gerling saying, quote, This important energy infrastructure is poised to put thousands of people to work, billions in economic stimulus, and strengthens the continent's energy security. The 1,200-mile Keystone XL will deliver some 830,000 barrels a day of crude from Hardesty, Alberta, to Steel City, Nebraska. That's where it'll connect up with TC Energy's existing facilities, eventually taking that Canadian crude to the U.S. Gulf Coast refiners. Important, the company says the pipeline is expected to enter service in 2023. So that's the situation tonight. As for what might happen tomorrow morning on the crossing near Canada and the U.S. border, is anyone's guess. Will there be any protesters? Highly unlikely, given the pandemic situation. Some environmental groups suggest that's part of the company's strategy to move forward right now. Nonetheless, a big day for the Keystone XL project as TC Energy is gearing up for what it says is going to be a busy construction year ahead. Russ, back to you.
All right, thanks a lot, Jay. And Jay mentioned the legal issues swirling around the Keystone XL. Six environmental groups, including the Northern Plains Resource Council and the Sierra Club, continue to press their case at both the state and federal level. In Montana, the issue is permits to cross state waterways, and that requires a hearing and a public comment period, none of which has happened yet. Now, at the federal level, the BML's or BLM's record of decision on the project states that no construction can move forward until the company has all the necessary permits in hand. Another water alert and advisory issued tonight for the Warden Ballantyne Yellowstone County Water and Sewer District. That warning issued late this afternoon. The latest tests in that area show that source water in that area is influenced by surface water, needs to be disinfected and filtered. Chlorine disinfection has been increased, but that's not completely effective against all the possible contaminants. Because nitrate levels are above allowable levels, boiling water is not an option for treatment. Bottled water is the safest alternative. Tribal officials on the Crow Reservation are implementing roadblocks to protect the community from COVID-19 spread. Here's a look at the checkpoint about eight miles south of Hardin on Highway 313. There are five of them total around the reservation. Tribal Incident Command officials say they are mostly in place to inform people about orders from the tribal government. Late last week, Crow Tribe Chairman A.J. Not Afraid issued a stay-at-home order for, order for the uh, reservation consistent with the uh, orders given to the rest of the state by Governor Bullock. Checkpoints are also in place to keep non-tribal members off the reservation. The portion of Interstate 90 that crosses the Crow Reservation is still open for travel. And there have been no cases of COVID-19 reported, as you mentioned, on the reservation. All right, meteorologist Ed McIntosh joining us now. And Ed, an earthquake was shaking some people in Montana today. It was a pretty powerful one. It too. was. It was in southern Idaho. As we take a look, a 6.5 magnitude earthquake that happened just north of Stanley. You can see it's about 70 miles away from Boise. Um, that was felt right about 6 p.m. this evening. And that also caused some problems. Now, 6.5 is a fairly strong earthquake. It's listed as moderate to strong, and it has the capability of doing light to moderate damage. Damage. Fortunately, it was centered in an area that was fairly uh, rural and mountainous, but the waves could be felt, especially in an area from Twin Falls up to Coeur d'Alene, all the way over to Butte and Great Falls, getting some of those reports. In fact, it covered reports over a six state region. A look at the weather's coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Ed. The Billings Catholic Schools Foundation says it's canceling this year's Mayfair Carnival due to the coronavirus. The Mayfair is the foundation's signature fundraising evening of the year. Would have happened on Sunday, May 17th. The foundation president says the decision is in line with recommendations from the Yellowstone County Public Health Officer to reduce the risk of possible coronavirus exposure. In the meantime, the foundation board is exploring the idea of holding fundraising events similar to Mayfair in summer or fall. And new today, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks has shut down its group use sites. This includes all fishing piers at Montana State Parks, fishing access sites and wildlife management areas. It's all due to the high risk of a lot of people congregating. A few fishing access sites and wildlife management areas do remain open, but public opportunities will be limited. Overnight camping will no longer be allowed. To accommodate current campers, campgrounds will close with a 72-hour notice. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, we're showcasing local restaurants that continue to keep the doors open for us. We'll see where Zoe Zandora was doing Takeout Tuesday. Plus, a Montana teacher dives into the music world in order to put smiles on the faces of her students. And in sports, some former billing standouts put a new meaning into heavy lifting as they search for ways to stay in shape. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.